Top 5 Japan's Absurd Robots Japan is one of the most robot-friendly countries in the world. It already makes use of 250,000 robots across Japanese industry, more than any other country in the world, and expects this number to surpass 1 million by 2025. But some of these robots, although useful to some, seem like the silliest idea on the planet. So don't forget to watch today's video to the very end for the top 5 Japan's most absurd robots. But before we begin, we request you to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to never miss another upload of ours. Having said that, let's jump right in. Number 5. Yume Neko Smile Cat Robot by SEGA Meet the Yume Neko Smile Cat Robot by SEGA. It's a rather scary, unnatural take on a cat. The Yume Neko Smile, Dream Cat Smile from SEGA Toys is the latest in robotic animal interactivity for those who love the feeling of having a cat without all the fuss and fur of, well, having a cat. Her internal tactile sensors throughout her body let you interact with her by friendly touching and she'll respond appropriately. Yume Neko responds to your touch just like a real cat. Patting it on the head, scratching it, picking it up, and pulling its tail, among other actions, will elicit lots of realistic cat reactions. Don't bother her too much or she'll get angry. Reactions include blinking, moving legs, purring, moving its head, and more. The Sony Ibo that brings AI toys to a new era. Robots are no longer just for kids. In fact, in Japan, they're developing cat robots to aid people at the nursing home or terminally ill patients. Why cats? Because statistically, cats are the best therapy pets out of all of the animals. Something about their purring and laid-back manner help reduce a person's blood pressure and tension. What can Yume Neko Smile do, you may ask? She makes loud purrs and meows as you pet her on the scruff, head, or under the chin. She also blinks her eyes, moves her mouth, turns her head, pulls her rear up, and lies down. If you decide to give her tail a gentle squeeze, she might get mad by hissing back at you. Though you may think the robots don't get tired, Yume Neko Smile is programmed to go sleep. Set the lower power mode, after being let alone for a while where you'll see her slowly closing her eyes and starting to snore a little bit. As soon as you give her a slight pat on the head, she'll wake up. The toy may come off a bit creepy to some people, but generally it's a pretty good alternative to people that are allergic to cats, but still dying to have one. All the sounds are pre-recorded, so they sound the same when replayed, but the anticipation to know what the cat will do next always keeps people intrigued. The cat is, after all, an electronic toy controlled by a bunch of gears and wires, so when the cat is interacting with people, it's also making a constant motor whirring sound, but it doesn't really throw off the fun and the experience. Number 4. The Swine Flu Robot Japan, famous for robots that do everything from sing karaoke to care for grandparents, has got itself a swine flu simulator. The human-like robot, which has a body, face, hands, and feet like a person's, and even skin, simulates H1N1 flu symptoms. As Reuters reported on site, the robot cries, sweats, and even convulses. Sources report that the robot can even die. The robot is coated in a human-like skin. It sweats, moans, cries, and convulses, just like a human would when infected with the H1N1 virus. If it's not treated properly, the systems gradually get worse and the robot stops breathing. According to the Daily Record, the humanoid was developed to help train Japanese doctors in treating H1N1. Patient simulator robots aren't exactly new, but this particular one seems to be the first specialized version programmed to exhibit the symptoms of one certain disease. Though no replacement for a genuine human patient, the robot should serve its purpose in providing caregivers with a basic understanding of how H1N1 influenza affects people and how to know if treatment is getting results or not. Number 3. Repli R1 Robot Repli R1 is the little sister of the more famous Repli Q1 robot. The Osaka University, headed by Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro in collaboration with Kokoro Incorporated, developed a human-like female android robot called Repli Q1. This robot looks extremely human and is equipped with various sensors and motors allowing it to behave, act, and move like a human. Its silicone skin is embedded within ultra-sensitive sensors allowing it to react when someone touches it. In order to move like a real human being, its developer installed air actuators in its joints, allowing them to control the android with relative ease and without compliance control. The Repli Q1 can also flicker its eyelids and move her hand like a human being. Just by watching her, one would think that this female android is almost breathing. This android is the predecessor of the Repli Q1 Expo that has a greater number of human-like movements. Repli R1 is a similar humanoid-looking robot, carrying the looks of a little girl. If you think Repli R1 is a bit creepy, you're not alone. 
Japanese roboticist Mahihiro Mori remarked in 1970 that as robots become more human-like in appearance, people respond more positively. However, a point will be reached when people will be strongly repulsed. Acceptance will fall. This quote-unquote uncanny valley is of great importance for those who believe that robots will play an increasingly important role in our lives. Number 2. Geminoid as robots are designed by and used by humans, it seems a natural progression that we create robots in our own image. The benefits of this being that we interact and empathize more with AI like this. But it also creates the problem of the uncanny valley. Simply put, this is when the near identical human resemblance of a hominoid arouses a sense of disturbance or revulsion in the person viewing it. To illustrate this point more particularly, came to life Geminoid, built by Hiroshi Ishiguro Laboratories of Osaka University. To make Geminoid, coming from the Latin Geminus, meaning twin, the professor showed no boundaries. He used a mold of his physique, programmed his body language and voice into it, and even implanted his own hair into the android's head. Considering this video also discusses the, quote, blurring the boundary between humans and robots, and that, quote, the soul can exist in anything, it's suggestive that Ishiguro has fundamentally made his android twin an actual being. Four years after building Geminoid, Professor Ishiguro revealed a female android called Geminoid F. This new robot has the ability to change and express facial expressions much more naturally than previous androids, and is widely viewed as the most realistic robot to date. It still creeps us out though. Number 1. Telenoid Imagine talking to your friends through a robotic copy of Casper the Friendly Ghost. That's what I imagine it must be like to use the Telenoid R1, the new telepresence robot developed by Osaka University and ATR. The diminutive robot is just 80 centimeters long, 31 inches, ghost white, and has stubby limbs that make it look exactly like a cartoon ghost. Creepy, yes, but also a little adorable. It's designed to be a minimalist human form, something that can be recognized as either male or female, young or old, alive or dead. Telenoid is an advanced video conferencing tool. A person in front of a webcam will have their voice and head movements recorded and sent over the internet to the robot through Wi-Fi connection. You, on the receiving end miles away, talk to the Telenoid robot as if it were your friend. Your undead, uber-creepy friend. The Telenoid is the latest in humanoid robots from the legendary Dr. Hiroshi Ishiguro. He's the mind behind other, equally creepy telepresence robots like the Geminoid F we've reviewed before. With a Telenoid, Ishiguro really seems to be aiming to create a universal stand-in for humanity. Elders can talk with their grandchildren on the other side of the world while creating the Telenoid's soft silicone body. Students can receive English lessons under the Telenoid's unblinking eyes. Each scenario works just as well as the other, though we're not sure how comfortable we'd be with either one. Ishiguro has stripped out many of the actuators from his earlier humanoid telerobots, leaving less than a dozen to power the Telenoid's eye, head, and limb movements. With that, we come to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Lastly, join in next time for more of such interesting content.